Good morning. Shabbat Shalom. Exact and Truth Body Fellowship Believers, and of course, the Exact and Truth Landscape of Believers Across That Fruited Plain. Welcome to our Saturday Sabbath Facebook Live for Exact and Truth Ministries. My name is Solera Arman Jr. We're shepherd and leading emissary at Exact and Truth Ministries in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Welcome and Shabbat Shalom. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day that your mighty hand has made. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for protection and provision with regards to our loved ones, our relatives, our children, our neighbors, friends, co-workers, and even our enemies. We're asking that you come into this service today. We're asking that you accept our posture of worship the position that we lower ourselves, make ourselves humble and meek in entering into your presence. We pray that you receive this prayer and our praise uplifting of your name. We pray that you order our steps and that you speak in our hearing. Let it be you and not we ourselves. And as we incline our ears, administer grace to every hear and allow us to leave this service the better for coming, no longer the same. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And we're asking that you remember the truly poor today, the sick and shut in. We pray uh, for the New Day family, our landscape uh, sister, Sister Brittany, her sister, strengthen her body, uh, her father. There are so many people that are infirmed in this day and time. But we're asking that with your mighty hand and your healing graces that you allow it to go out and uh, to counter the illnesses that people are experiencing. But let your will be done. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, let us be a city set upon a hill that cannot be hidden, the salt of the world, the, the light of the world, and the salt of the earth. And we're asking right now that, once again, you remember those, we say at Exact and Truth Ministries, that need remembering everywhere, that are fearful, skeptical, unbelieving, doubting, decompressing from the faith because of various things that have discouraged them, oftentimes in encountering mankind that say they represent you but are aberrant with regards to their walk and the orthodoxy of your word in your way. Lord, forgive us and help us not to blame you for what mankind has done. And we ask these blessings and many more in that great name. You're greater than all of the things that we're encountering. We're, you're greater than everything that we see. You're greater than uh, Delta and Omicron and whatever it is that is proliferating uh, through this earth and that is uh, pillaging communities. We Pray that you stand and live big inside of us, and we ask these blessings and many more once again in that great name, Yeshua, Yehoshua, Hamashiach, the Christ's name we pray. Amen. Wow. Prayers are getting longer. We have much to pray for. Good morning. Blessings to you. Shabbat Shalom to those of you who are joining us. Welcome. Irrespective of where you are, some people are in parts of the country where it's very early for you to rise. We're grateful to have you. We don't take it for granted that you are worshiping, fellowshipping, studying with us. So blessings to you today, beloved. We pray that you're doing well. We pray that you're in good health and that you prosper even as your soul prospers. And so hopefully you're sending out prayers to Shepherd Man and the Exact and True family. If you are, we're blessed. If you're not, well, we love you anyway. It's not a whole lot you can do about it. But we're grateful. Good morning. Let's get ready to dive in. We've got an encouraging word for you this morning. Some of y'all are like, wow, what the news and with everything that's going on i can use an encouraging word well you're in the right place we've got an encouraging word from you for you rather for you and uh let's get ready to get into this you all know that on saturday sabbath we hold up the holy writ we hold up the word of the most high why do we hold it up because it contains his words the words of the most high and words that were left on record for our learning so symbolically we hold it up because we're looking up to it and not down to our own understanding. The scripture says that we should look into the hills from which cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Most High, who's made the heavens and the earth. And I would like to direct your attention, if you would allow me, to the second letter, Paul the Apostle, to the primary church in Greece, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 9, King's Authorized Version. We're going to read this in your hearing this morning. Join us. If you would, we'd be much obliged. Once again, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 9, King's Authorized Version. Herein is the reading of the Holy Writ, beloved, and it reads as thus. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, in the flesh, beloved, 
we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, listen, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Praise the Most High. May the Most High add a blessing and an enriching to the reading of the Holy Writ. Before we close and introduce the title of our text for this morning, I want to reiterate verse 7. For we walk by faith. Walk by faith. Now faith, Hebrews 11 and 1, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For we walk by faith not by sight. Praise the Most High. May he add a blessing to the reading of Holy Writ for the time that is mine this morning. The title of our text is, What do you do when you hear the Most High, yet cannot see what he's doing? In Romans chapter 8, verse 18, Paul the Apostle states, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Powerful words. Paul's letter to the Ecclesia in Rome is believed by historians to have been his last authentic epistle ascribed to any of the fellowship of believers in which he discipled and was composed nearly 2,000 years ago. Yet the parallels in the societal landscape between the mid-first century common era, as it's regarded, and the current times in which we live are both striking, but also very sad and clear to see. At the proposed time of the composition of Paul's letter, placing its composition somewhere in the years 57 to 58 CE, common era or AD, uh, that he penned to the believers in Rome, beloved Nero, the stepson of Claudius, his predecessor was emperor of Rome at that time. Nero was a sadistic leader, to say the least, and fervently continued the state-sanctioned persecution of Judeo-Christian believers as well as the execution of many other nefarious plots against the state and the citizenry of the Roman Empire during his tenure. Both Peter and Paul the Apostle, while Nero was the emperor of Rome, were believed to have been executed. And despite the peril that Paul, along with the rest of the body fellowship of believers at that time were facing, it was clear to see, beloved, the hope and powerful faith exhibited by Paul. It exudes literally through the words that he wrote to the ecclesias that he discipled and clearly what he shared in Romans chapter 8 is no exception, along with our foundational basis and scriptural text for this morning out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. In verse 25 of Romans chapter 8, Paul goes on to say, but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience, listen, wait for it. Some of y'all are like, now that's where I kind of struggle. Beloved, I would love to encourage each and every one of you this morning in the landscape to be steadfast in your faith and patiently wait, as well as diligently trust in the promises prophesied by Paul the Apostle which I believe sincerely and wholeheartedly, beloved, still possess immense relevance today. 
Listen, we've read and recited the encouraging words of Paul this morning. And you all have heard Shepherd Man reiterate those encouragements despite what so many of us are facing in life at this very moment and current time in history. I've been bombarded, literally bombarded, beloved, with requests for prayer ever since last week's Thanksgiving observance. So many people undoubtedly and unwittingly spread or contracted COVID, for example, during close encounters with family and friends. My family was not spared and unfortunately received news of similar circumstances amidst our gatherings. Lord have mercy. The mere mention of a new variant and its alleged increase in the ease of transmission has sent the entire globe into a tailspin of sorts within the last two weeks. Some of us had just begun to rebound from all of the losses incurred over the last several years. And now there are fears and there are sightings of new lockdowns. Some already have began in other countries. Many countries have began to separate and order unvaccinated individuals back into quarantine. Huh. And so many of you are saying, in spite of all of this, and in record of all of this, Shepherd Man, you're still getting us up this morning and reciting positive speak and positive talk and reading the positive words of the Apostle Paul despite what we're facing. I don't know, Shepherd Man. It's, uh, I know those words are supposed to be enlightening, but I don't know how I feel in light of everything that's going on. You're encouraging us to have faith and hope, not only to trust that we're surrounded and protected by the Almighty, but that despite everything that is going on around us, to believe that the Most High has something great in store for his chosen in the midst of this incoming storm that we're facing, that seems like it's never going to have an end. Well, beloved, I'll pose a question to you this morning. In response to the prior line of questioning that may be upon your heart in light of what this sermon has been about this far, what exactly should you do when you've heard the Most High, when you've heard scripture verse, verse, verses that were left on record for our learning, when you've heard uh, messages and you've been preached to, when you've been prophesied to, what exactly should you do when hands have been laid on you and prayers have been prayed, gifts have been imparted, when you've been instructed to be encouraged despite all that is occurring all around us. You listen to words of encouragement. You listen to words from leaders in times past that once again, we're left on record for our learning that we are supposed to learn from, grow from, become edified from absorbing and ingesting, but can't see, despite all of it, any evidence regarding what you've heard. Yeah, anybody can preach, but where do I find manifestation? Anybody could pray, but where do I find the answer and the responses to my prayer? And no sooner do I feel like that we're emerging from problems than something happens in this world or amidst society that seems to sink us right back down to where or below we were prior. What do you do when you actually believe that you heard from the Most High? Yeah, I heard the scripture. I heard the message. I even heard a word. He speaks to us in dreams or somebody imparted a word of knowledge. What do you do when you're pretty sure you heard from him, but you still cannot see what he's doing in your life or the lives of those that you love? Trust me, it can be very disheartening when you can't see your way. It can take its toll on hope and trust when you lack direction for your life, particularly when what is visible and the only things that you can see are the movements of your enemies. You can't sit down and enjoy a single television 
program seemingly today without seeing the plan of the adversary, the literal presence of Satan himself in the things that are portrayed and that are depicted supposedly for our pleasure and perusal. You can't sit down and watch programming, listen to music, even observe podcasts, and it's very rare that you don't witness the progress of the enemies of faith stealing and commanding ground in this day and time. It can be discouraging. And when you look around, it's difficult to see the results and the manifestation of the things that we heard or the things that we were told hang in there. It's on its way. Even with regards to the news today, which probably is the worst culprit, whether it be local, regional, national, or even international, seems to solely focus on reporting chaos and destruction. You wouldn't think that anything was positive going on in the world. And when they do choose to report something positive, listen, we've all witnessed it. Half the time, I don't even watch the local news any longer. And I'm a, and I'm a, a purveyor and, a, and someone that pride themselves in being informed. But I'm telling you, if they do something positive, it's a murder. Then somebody talking about milking a cow, then it's another murder. Most news outlets today appear to take great pleasure in profiting off of the dissemination of toxic, divisive, violent, racist, discriminatory, prejudicial, and biased reporting and propaganda. The absorption of all of this carnal poison has made the spiritual vision of so many murky and cloudy. Is there anybody here that can relate with where I'm coming from? The stock market may still be in a bull rush, as it were. Cryptocurrency may still be ascending in value. But, beloved, we are in the midst of possibly the most profound mental health crisis in human history. And there are not enough doctors and there are not enough counselors to see to all of the people that are broken and despondent. I'm frequently confronted, even as recently as two days ago in public by folks walking up to me and individuals that I encounter who recognize me and they say, Pastor Man, will this cycle of infection and ever emerging variants and ever emerging viral sickness ever come to an end? Pastor, do you see an end to the things that are now and a return to some degree of what we've viewed in times past as normalcy? Folks, I'm telling you, everywhere you look, there's people afraid to make plans for their immediate future because with all of this chaos going on around us, and I don't mean to depress you today, hang in there, we're going somewhere with this. It is very difficult for many to predict what tomorrow may bring. So they're hesitant and procrastinating on plans, even plans to prosper because they're afraid of what can happen tomorrow, nonetheless, a month or a year from now. But beloved, what we're missing this morning is something very fundamental regarding spirituality and faith perception. What we're missing this morning is sound and what is audible normally, if not always, precedes what can be seen. Even in this corporeal realm, Holy Ghost and fire, what awakens us, for example, at night and prompts us to check for possible dangers lurking or threats to our children and loved ones. What alerts us to move, for example, to the side of the road while driving far before we see the flashing lights of emergency first responders? Beloved, it is sound that prompts us to react. It is sound which alerts us that change is necessary or that change is to come. The principle of the matter this morning is, in the realm of faith, beloved, sound is sight. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verse 28, the Christ told the woman, 
that shouted out a blessing to his earthly surrogate mother Mary for giving birth to him and rearing him. She was in admiration of him. She wasn't uh, being a troll or criticizing him. Yet the Christ responded to her saying, yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of the most high God of the Hebrews and keep it. In the gospel of John chapter 20, verse 29, the Christ told a previously skeptical Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. The Christ stated in the gospel of John chapter 8 verses 31 and 32, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The Paul the Apostle wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18, for the Lord himself shall descend with, from heaven with what? A shout, beloved, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together and with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Beloved, sound insight. He's always moved, always preceded. The actions that can be observed and witnessed has always been preceded by sound. When it comes to our faith in the most high, sound is sight. When you hear the word of the Lord, when you personally bear witness to the voice of the most high, your hope and trust should already trigger a faith precedent that informs you that sound always precedes manifestation. If you can hear him, then that means that he's close. If you can hear him, then that means that he's near. If you can hear him, then that means that it's done. Beloved, in the case of blind faith, in the case of believers stepping out on nothing, I can hear the often repeated words of the late Reverend Billy Graham's renowned sermon, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Why do I uh, preface that message? It's because this carnal world attempts to teach us that seeing is believing, but that is actually counterintuitive to how the power of the Almighty works through faith. You need to recognize this morning, and this is a short one. I got a lot to do in a short period of time to get it done. So we're preparing to close, but I hope you're encouraged. And I'm going to leave you with this, beloved, this morning. You need to recognize that when you hear his voice, you are seeing and sensing his presence. Hallelujah. That's what we do when we hear, but it's still difficult to see. We recognize that with him, it always has been about hearing. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the words of the Most High. Do you hear him today? Be not dismayed, whatever betides you. The Most High will take care of you. Beneath the wings of love, abide. He will take care of you. If you can hear him, <laughs> don't worry about seeing him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you're encouraged today. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this powerful encouragement. Give us the faith that is necessary and it only requires a mustard seed. But give us nonetheless that mustard seed size faith so that we might believe that in spite of everything that is in front of us, Satan purposely attempts to position everything that is discouraging in our scope, in our prism, and in our purview, in an attempt to block us from what we should already understand and what we should already know is that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, world and your voice and your presence resides in, the, in us with regards to your Holy Spirit, your Holy Ghost, and we thank you for that. We thank you for that voice speaking to us in dark times and allowing it to be an illumination and a light for our hearts and more importantly, an example and a light for others that are seeking to find you. Forgive us if we've doubted you. Forgive us if we've walked in discouragement and dismay because of all that could be seen. We have power and we have a promise and that is age old, thousands of years old, prophetic. We already understand 
that we have the victory, despite what we might have to sojourn and endure and encounter. He that endureth, the same shall be saved. And we thank you for that. We thank you. And for those who seek a new path, a different direction, we'll never be remiss to say that it's nigh to them, the forgiveness of their sins, the lifting of their shoulders, the lifting of their head, faith and confidence as opposed to sin and degradation, forsaking of a pathway because you died on the cross, your precious son, but didn't stay dead, rose again and is sitting currently right now on the right hand of the Most High, Almighty Father of us all, making intercession for each and every one of us, which today this encouraging message is an example of said intercession. And we pray once again that you save us, allow us to be saved as Paul prefaced to the church in the Ecclesia in Rome, chapter 10, verse 9. Allow us to be saved, in other words, from the original Greek word sozos for save, which means to preserve or protect us until such a time that you return for us, that we might live with you in infinite time. We ask these blessings and many more in that great name, Yeshua, Yehoshua, Hamashiach, the Christ name we pray. Listen, be encouraged despite everything that's going on. Listen, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Telling you, if you're weak today, it doesn't mean that you're going to falter. It just means that it's less of you in the way so that he can work on your behalf more effectively. So be encouraged. Have a wonderful Saturday, Sabbath, beloved, peaceful rest. Shabbat Shalom. We love you. Join us next week in our Exacting Insight into the Word Wednesday. And until then, blessings.